You see so much of my life, but there's still that, that part of you that nobody gets to see. We have TV personality, presenter, businesswoman, the ultimate mum, Firma Khan, in the building. All I can remember when I was young, when I was, when I was a kid, was that I wanted to perform, I wanted to be on stage, I wanted that fame. And it really is, be careful what you wish for, because when I arrived there, I was like, oh, this isn't as sort of glamorous and as amazing as what I fantasized about in my mind. We know that life isn't linear, and self-development isn't straightforward because just when you think you've cracked it something happens in life it seems like you are the ultimate like depiction of health right now you look you're glowing like honestly oh, I honestly believe Scott and I feel like I've heard you say something similar before but I honestly believe our darkest times are sent to us because that is the moment that we're going to level up I just know these things Oh my okay. goodness. Amazing. How are you? I thought okay. I'd come to you. You're right. You look amazing. How are you? Oh, you look amazing. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Everyone is just so glamour. I am so here for the Manchester Live. Okay, Good. here we go. <laughs> Action, guys. <laughs> I'm Fern McCann and I am joining the lovely Scott on Learning As I Go. Woo! We've yeah. done it. Yeah. You know it's a sign of levelling up the podcast and we've got Fern McCann in the building. Oh, darling. You've always wanted to do that, haven't you? I have. Can I just say, was this broken before? Oh, no, mate. You just broke the, you broke the clipper board, Fern. Now I'm joking. You haven't really. That was done before. I reckon so. Oh, I reckon sorry, so. darling. I reckon so. We'll put that out there. So <laughs> Learning as I go. We have TV personality, presenter, businesswoman, businesswoman? The ultimate mum, Firma Khan, in the building. Welcome to Learn As I Go. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Scott. I feel like it's been a long time coming to have, make this conversation happen. No, like I we tried to get it in the diary late last year and now we're here. I'm so excited to be talking to you. And what a lovely intro as well. Like it's, it's not until I do things like this where I'm actually like, yeah. Yeah, I am. I am a mum and an entrepreneur and a reality star and everything else in between. Do you know what? It's so mad because I didn't even have to think about it. Then I was like, it just all rolled off the tongue because those are all the things that you've achieved. But like you said, we don't take a minute sometimes to celebrate. And sometimes we were just talking then that we take so much on in life that we kind of maybe forget who we are. But you said then that you like to spin lots of plates. You like to have your fingers in different pies, don't you? That is so part of my identity. I wouldn't be me if I wasn't super busy. Mm. And it isn't until, well, in times in my life where I've been like completely had to stop that I'm like, oh, what's happening? And I, I feel like this sense of panic. So I like busyness. Mm. My household is really busy. Work is busy. And if I'm not, I'll find moments to be more productive, to be more proactive. I'm not saying that's the right thing. Mm. Like, don't get me wrong. I feel like I'm constantly spinning so many different plates, wearing so many different hats. And I've always said that I've... I, daily drop the plates but yeah mm. I like being super super busy oh it's so interesting you say that because I got a um, tattoo on my arm balance right and I'm always craving balance and I'm always saying to my team like I don't want to be this busy I don't want to like I don't want to spin so many plates and I'm always feeling a bit sorry for myself because I've got so much going on but then if I take a step back and think you know what if I didn't have all this I would create this anyway so true like you can't complain about being busy mm. because I've had moments in my life where it's like oh, okay, and there is that sort of self-employed panic or am I ever going to work again? And it's it's not a nice feeling. Mm. I I don't like being in that place. And at the same time, I do, I'm exactly the same. I crave that calm. I crave that balance. But you need to find pockets to be like, like some of my most favorite moments is when I'm literally at home cooking for my friends. I've got my children there with me and mm. it is very calm. So I guess I'm sort of yin and yang. Yes, I like being busy in my professional life, but mm. behind, behind closed doors, I am pretty chill. Mm. I mean, do you ever wake up in the morning and feel overwhelmed? Like for me, and it's so funny because I was speaking to a, a young um, lad who works with me, Harvey, and he was saying to me, Scott, like you sometimes think you're busy because you're thinking about it so much. And I've just been diagnosed with ADHD, like I think so many other people. Mm. And I think sometimes what I struggle with is like time management and being kind of focused because I'm always getting distracted because I'm spinning so many different plates. I'd be in a meeting. If I get a message of someone else, my mind will go to that straight away. Do you feel like you're quite organized and focused when you want to be? I am not organized 
at all. Right. Like procrastination should be my middle name. Really? I have got so many. I mean, look, you, you can watch one TikTok and you're like, yeah, I've got ADHD. I feel yeah. like I've got all this, all the, all the signs. Have you been diagnosed? Have you tried no, to? No, I haven't. Do you know what? Like, oh, I don't know how I feel about labels, mm. if I'm honest. And I, I almost feel like it's a superpower of mine mm. that the fact that I can juggle so much. And yeah, I, I definitely do feel overwhelmed at times. Mm. Sometimes I think, oh my God, I'm not going to get everything done. I never complete my to-do list at the end mm. of the day. And then I wake up again and it just goes again. Like I was saying, I feel like I've got so many different tabs open. But in the next breath, if I wasn't able to, to be like that, I just wouldn't feel me. And I just feel like by being able to like, yeah, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll do that. Sometimes I forget things, but... I actually feel that I achieve more. Mm. No, 100%. It is a superpower. And I've never wanted to get diagnosed with ADHD because I felt like everybody who's had it has come up to me. Like, even when I was at the airport, Tanya Barzi came up to me and went, I've just been diagnosed. You've definitely got it. Yeah. It's like, not in a bad way, but everybody said it. I went, yeah, I probably have got it. But it's only recently when I met this guy in, in, in the steam and so on and he was saying to me, Scott, I've just been diagnosed with it. And it's not like, it's not like giving me um, like a, what's it called? Um a tag, it's just basically made me understand myself a lot more. Mm. And do you know what I mean? Because when I'm with someone, and I know you wanted to talk to me about the dating situation and for now, we'll go back to that in a bit. But like, if I'm- I'm so desperate to talk about your love life, If, I, if, I, if I'm not fully- It's a mystery. If I'm not fully present sometimes, <laughs> yeah. like that can be perceived as being rude. Whereas, and I'm not trying to give myself a pass, but there are times when I'm sat in a room with my team and they'll be speaking to me and I'll be on my phone and I can hear what they said, but I can't do two things at mm. once. And people might take that as being rude. So it's kind of just trying to understand myself, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm exactly the same. Like my mind sort of wanders and I think, oh my goodness, I've just started a conversation and now I'm like turned around or I'm on my phone mm. or what have you. But I don't know. I just kind of feel like, yeah, maybe I have got ADHD and like definitely the, the writing's on the wall. But why would I, and, and I completely appreciate that it makes some feel, you know, more aware of themselves, understand themselves a bit more. But I feel like really in touch with who I am mm. and my identity more than I ever have been. And mm. I don't know if that's come with age, life experiences, but I just, I'm not sure if I need that diagnosis to be like, right, I fully understand mm. myself now. No, I get that. And to be fair, even you sat here right now, I can see how present you are. Mm. Like you're just in the room. Yeah. And I think that's something that I'm always craving. Like I'm here now and the podcasts are really Thank great. Thank God for that. No, the, no, <laughs> no, but the podcasts are great for me because it's the one time where I have to sit down. Yeah, no phone. For, like, for, like, for a solid hour, eye contact, yeah. listen, truly be present. But in the back of my mind, there is shit, I've got to get all this done today. I've mm. got to move on. Straight after this, we're going here, we're going there. And it's just like, Scott, just be present, just enjoy the moment. And that's one thing that I'm really trying to get to. And I feel like you're at that point now. But one question I wanted to ask you, Fern, is like, I've seen over on your socials especially, and I know you came from a quite a similar... Um, Culture to me when we were growing up, it was all about the party and the lifestyle. I was a party girl. Yes, thank you. I didn't want to say it's just in case you were like, Scott, what are you talking no, about? No, it's fine. Like, I, was, I, I wasn't the ultimate party girl, but I liked to party. Yeah. yeah, and now it seems like you are the ultimate like depiction of health right now. You look, you're glowing. Like, honestly, oh, thank you, no babes. gas. You look the best I've ever seen. Yeah? Oh, and, so, no, I'm going to come back and do no, this podcast again. You look so fresh faced. And thank I you. can tell that you've just been on this journey. Where did that journey come from? Like the wellness journey? Oh, where do I start? Yeah, I, I feel really boring now. Mm. I'm going to be completely honest. What makes me feel good and fills my cup up is just like healthy living, don't get me wrong, I do love a glass of wine, mm. even though I have just completed dry jan. Woo! I do woo, woo. <laughs> um I do I do love um I do love I haven't been to a beach club in ages, but like, you know, I do love day party. The, like yeah, a day, the day yeah, party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't stay out past a no. certain time, like genuinely. But um now it is very it, it's definitely more holistic, it's definitely more wholesome. I know it's such a cliche thing to say, but I do love spending time with my kids. I also like spending time away from them. That's really mm. important that I've maintained my identity. But yeah, I think it's been a long road since Towie and then celebs go dating. I loved going out, I loved the scene. Um, but my first my first memory mm. of experiencing mental health and sort of exploring my spirituality and holistic therapies and alternative therapies was when I 
come to the end of my TOWIE journey and Scott, I was, I was praying so hard. Now I know it was almost like manifesting. I was just like, I want to get off this show. And I watched The Jungle for throughout my whole childhood. And I used to think, oh God, what would it be like to be in that hammock, to meet Anton Deck? And then eventually I, I, I made it onto the onto the jungle I do not know how because yeah. I'd only done TOWIE for like a few that was, series that was a big deal for someone yeah. from like TOWIE to get onto yeah. that show because it was amazing. Met, yeah and you, you went on there with was it Spencer Matthews Vicky yeah. it was like a big lineup and Vicky's still a very good friend of mine yeah she's like, amazing yeah she's it's it was just such an amazing chapter but that time in TOWIE it was a really surreal time because you almost get to see what your real friends and your boyfriend and their family are all saying about you Ooh moments after that you filmed a scene so like you're watching it and you're like that's me and they're my real relationship so it was just a complete vicious circle but at the time I really wanted to be famous mm. and I know that some people sort of wince when I say that but I, I genuinely did like mm. all I can remember when I was young when I was when I was a kid was that I wanted to perform I wanted to be on stage I wanted that fame and it really is be careful what you wish for because when I arrived there I was like oh, this isn't as sort of glamorous and as an amazing as what I fantasized about in my mind. Mm. And I actually hit a really dark place in TOWIE and I've just, it was a really vicious cycle. And I, I, I'm not saying that I was depressed, but I didn't get out of bed. I was going out and then I was filming on the show and I was leading a really poor lifestyle and I just wanted out. And then like any TV show, the support is always there. Mm -hmm. And this isn't, by the way, I, I I look back at my chapter when I was on The Only Way is Essex with, you know, I have no regrets and it was a really fun mm -hmm. time. And the support was there for, for everyone mentally. But mm -hmm. I sat in front of the psych and she said to me, I think that I should prescribe you um, antidepressants. Wow. Now, again, nothing wrong if that's the path that you decide to take. But for me, it was really shocking for me because it was just in an instant, like that was the solution. And I just thought, surely there's got to be another way to mm -hmm. bring me out of this, this horrendous feeling. And that's when I started exploring meditation and connecting with my spirit guides and doing daily rituals and started to look after myself a little bit more. But we know that life isn't linear and self-development mm. isn't straightforward because just when you think you've cracked it, mm. something happens in life. Mm. Um, and, you know, of the space of however long, I think it's been over a decade now that I've been in the public eye, I think it's safe to say that I have had definitely a lot of ups mm. but an awful lot of downs as well unprecedented times mm. so then when I've been faced with those situations you go again and you learn again and you find I I honestly believe Scott and I feel like I've heard you say something similar mm. before but I honestly believe that our darkest times are sent to us mm. because that is the moment that we're going to level up. That mm. is the assignment that if you're going to take it and you're going to go straight through the trauma, the hardship, the, the, just the sadness, when you get to the other side, that is the time that you're going to absolutely grow mm. resilience, that you're going to find strength in your character that you've never even explored or known about before. Mm. And then you go again and then you go again and you, I'm just like really big into leveling up. Okay. Mm. How can I overcome this? Mm. Wow. So yeah, it's been like, a journey. I feel like you're like my spirit animal or something because like that just spoke to me in so many different ways. And one thing that I really wanted to dig deep with you today is just like your resilience. Mm. Like, you have been through various storms in your career and, and been on the spotlight and you're such a good person. I can see that just like, oh, like, do you know what I mean? It just shines through, like even just the energy when you walked into here before, the way that you make people feel and everything else. Um, and I just, I just really curious of like how you stayed so resilient through all these tests. And, and is it because of the wellness things? Because like you said, like, I practice um, wellness pretty much every single day, but there are times when, like, especially over the last few months, because of work and other life stresses, that my routine's not been as strong. And mm. I feel like a bit of a fraud sometimes going, but wait a second, Scott, you know this and you teach about this, but you've not been on your A game. But that is life. Like sometimes it's not bang on. It's not like every day is perfect, but I know exactly what I need to do to get back strong. So like yeah. even from today, I'm, I've given myself a little challenge where I'm going to be meditating every single day, journaling, reading, like yes. exercising, drinking two and a half liters of water, like I know all the things to get me back to where I need to be. And it's a nice feeling knowing that you've got those tools. Do you, do you relate to that? 
Oh, definitely. The tools that you can have in your back pocket. But then obviously we all know and I feel exactly the same sometimes when it's like, oh God, I feel like a bit of a fraudster, especially at the moment I've got a baby who doesn't sleep. She would be absolutely perfect in every way. Mm. No one can be. And hers is, is that she just doesn't sleep. So I'm tired and, you know, things you sort of drop the ball a little bit. You're not as on it with your self-development. And I'd love to be meditating a lot more than what, what I used to. Um, but you can't, you can't do it all. No. I think it's really useful having those tools in your back pocket that you know is going to pull you through them dark times. But how do you know what pulls you through the dark times unless you've been through them? Mm. You have to go through those really shitty hard times to to learn about yourself and to learn what works. Then, of course, as you know, we've also got a lot of coping mechanisms that aren't healthy, no. that we we end up sort of, it's because what we know. And comfort zones sometimes aren't very comfortable, but mm. it's like you get drawn back to the past and what you know. And like, for me, that's comparing myself to others and finding myself in a Instagram you know, whole just looking, why, why not, why am I not like them? Why have I not got the success like that? And, you know, it just, and then I just completely spar and mm. I'm like, I'm shit, I'm failing, I'm this, I'm that. And before you know it, you're just like feeling terrible about yourself and you're yeah. back to square one. And, it, and that's the one thing that I've always noticed, like, I want to drive from a place of like passion, not from a place of having to prove people wrong, even mm. prove to myself, like, I'm literally my own boss, but I literally drive yes. myself Every single day. And, and my therapist said to me once, right, Scott, right? You've got three businesses. And if your bosses were driving you the way that you're driving yourself, what would you tell them? I said, I'd tell them to do one. Do you know what I mean? Because that's how mentally I, I push myself. And like I said, I do find it a bit of a superpower mm. because it, it achieves so much. But I think for me, it's just, again, getting to that point where I can separate who I am from what I do. Mm. Does that make sense of my mm. value? Yeah. Does that make sense? So say like if, I have, if I'm on a tough time at business... Like that doesn't define me as a person. So and, true. and do you find that sometimes, like, even on social media, Fern, we all know, right? Don't let um, likes and followers and everything else impact how you feel. But if we put a post out, it's still, and it doesn't do well. And I know that's not a reflection of me, yeah? yeah. But it still hurts it a little hurts. bit. It hurts. <laughs> Thank God for the hide likes feature on Instagram. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's really weird. I mean, unless I post a picture of my, my children looking cute or yeah. something that speaks to people, it just bombs and I'm like oh no one cares about me yeah. <laughs> like just some washed up reality star yeah. now um but yeah no the likes it, it does hurt doesn't it it mm. really does if people are not like but you have to overcome that I mean social media I really have got a love-hate relationship with it because same we all need it. I mm. very much need it in my and it's part of everyone's life so it's not going away mm. but at the same time you know there's there's this misconception of who I am online and who who I am in the public eye. And, and I think that really gets to me. Mm. It really gets to me. And I, I you talk about doing things from a place of passion or purpose instead of a point to prove. There's often times where I feel like, oh, I just, I just wish people knew about this about me. I wish people could see like inside my home. Yes, I've got a reality show and you see so much of my life, but there's still that, that, part of you that nobody gets to see and obviously things happen in the public eye and then people form an opinion of you and then you feel like there's an injustice and people don't know you and it, it can be really mm. really difficult at times mm. do you know i mean i'm getting to the point now where i'm trying to show that side to me as much, you know like obviously we show the highs so much right we do and i came in i remember just before christmas i was having such a tough day and i was literally scrolling my phone going, right what can i post that's positive what can i put out there and i went what am I doing? I feel like shit. I'm exhausted. There's probably so many people out there who feel the same. And I just did one like post saying, guys, I'll be honest with you, I was looking for something positive, but I'm feeling shit today. I'm exhausted. It's, it's tough out there right now in business for everybody and it's not, wow, my, my views, everything just went through the roof. Everyone DMing me. So, and the next day, a guy came up to me in the street and went, Scott, like looked at me, the tears in his eyes going, mate, that, that post last night massively helped me to know that someone like you, and I was just like, wow, like, that's what people want to see more of, but at the same time, is you don't want to dry, you don't want to be a what's it called, a, an emotion vacuum, like an, yeah, uh, uh, negatron. I know yeah. what you mean. But don't you think that there's just something so powerful in being your authentic, true self? And over the years, that's something that I've found 
difficult to be because being in the public eye, oh, do I need to be more like this? Do I need to be more like her? And I I do it all the time on social media where I look at other people sort of similar to me or maybe someone that inspires me that I want to be more like. Maybe it's women in business. I mean, that's a whole nother topic because it's all very new to me. Um but I look and I think, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not being, I'm not me, being, I need to be more like that person. I need to be more like this. And actually, it's you. It's your true, authentic self that people are going to resonate with. And if they don't, then they're not going to follow you. Mm. And that's absolutely fine. Well, can I just say on that phone, I feel like you're from, um, your two worlds are colliding a little bit like mine. Whereas now you come from like traditional, like old school, like media, where it was like almost a little bit, don't let people too in, keep it a little bit polished almost a bit like Holly Willoughby, really clean. Do you know what I mean? Like that's how we how we thought everything used to be. TikTok's come in. Yeah. And now everybody don't want all that. They just want they just want raw you like a little bit. I think Olivia Atwood does it really well. She smashes she, it. She just literally doesn't give a shit. However, I don't think she's got businesses to push and do you, know you know what I mean? Like if I if I did a video of Olivia last night with her ass out. I'm, <laughs> no, she is brilliant. It's brilliant. She I is, love it. But I was like, I can't go to that level. Me, sometimes I feel like very, very on edge with what I post. And then you almost are filtering yourself, mm. which is then hard to be your authentic, true mm. self. And then maybe that's where the frustration comes from. I wish people could just see my, my day-to-day yes. life. Yeah. That's why I love this I've, show. I've had some people say to me before, um, I wish people got to see this, Scott. Because not many people yeah. get to see the real... And even when I was back in my partying days, people thought they knew me, the Scottish special. But that was... That's how I, yeah, I remember that was, you. Yeah, that was miles off who I was. It was just... In fact, it just wasn't even me. It was someone else driving my body. There, there is mm. an element of me where I'm a massive extrovert, but I'm also a massive introvert. Yeah. Like, I love being around people, but then I need to get away from them as well and yeah. like, be on my own and... It is difficult to kind of put that across, but let's go back to something you mentioned before about always wanting to be famous because that's something that I think I always wanted deep down. Mm. Like, obviously, my dad was a soul singer and he was like, he used to perform with the Jackson 5 and everything else. So I was brought wow. up around that. And then my brothers were like in soaps from an early age. You've got to remember, like, my brothers were famous since the age of 16 and I didn't get on TV till 27. So I was the guy who was always taking the pictures. Oh, we take a picture of um, your brothers for me and this. And so I know exactly what it's like not to be famous. And I always got asked to do so many shows like Big Brother. And my brother's like, no, you're not doing reality TV. It's tacky. Because it was a bit back then. Do you know what I mean? It first yeah. came out. And then I said, well, and I put my foot down once when I'm doing Love Island. And I went on there and I just felt at home. And I've always felt like I, fame has never bothered me. And obviously I'm not on the level that you are. I've, I think I've always had a nice level of fame, if that makes sense. It's not been too over there. And if someone asked me for a picture, I love it because it's like, I can make their day and it me and it's so easy for me to do it. Like yeah. where some people don't like doing pictures. And Whereas me, I'm so cool with that. And yeah, I know I've been on the side. I am. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's external validation that I, I've always been chasing and looking for. Like, and if I'm having a good day on social, I'm having a good day in general. Yeah. Right. But I want to be having a good day when it's just me on my own with no other like external validation, which is sometimes difficult to get to. I mean, I have it. I do have those days, but I am, I'm not going to lie to you, really driven by external validation a lot. Do you, do you feel that? Well, I think it's a really good point when you're just by yourself and you're completely, it feels vulnerable because you're not relying on those external validations and all the likes and the this and people coming up to you and asking you for pictures when you are completely by yourself. And this is why I think that going through the ups and downs in life are so important. I mean, I've always said, <laughs> I've said this before and I'm going to say it again, when my children have their first breakup or their first moment where they I was going to say suffer, but that sounds really mean. Mm. But where they, when they're going to go through stuff that's going to really hurt, I'm, I, I think it's so important because that's how we really learn how to, to be vulnerable and to how to, that's where we learn about our true strength in character. And that's an interesting point when it comes to parenting, right? It's a bit of a balance really, because I feel like the best behaved kids who I used to knock around with were the ones who were really tight with their mums. Like, especially the girls, like they didn't hide anything. They were allowed to do it. And they were probably usually like the best ones to yeah. like, and all, but then also I feel like sometimes, and I've seen it as well with my, my brothers and their kids, like if you give them too much, like they don't learn anything. They don't appreciate anything. No. So sometimes it's about tough love, right? A little bit of tough love. And at the risk of not being liked by your kids, I think that must be difficult. Does that make sense? Oh, do you know what, Scott? I have had 
therapy now for six years and having therapy as a parent is so scary because you're constantly thinking oh god yeah how can i not can i swear on this yes you swear how can i not fuck up my child's childhood like literally i'm like god i'm learning all about listen my mum is amazing by the way my parents are, are great and my mum is like my best friend but it's almost like god i know this now and there's so much everywhere on social like about conscience pe- conscious parenting don't do this don't give them too much of that if you do this and it's just like an absolute head because everything starts um they say like especially up until the age of like seven you just don't record for the rest of your life oh but the, you can't win though because i know kids who were really smothered and overloved like mm. and um, they end up not being strong enough right mm. then you've got like apparently i've got abandonment issues because my dad wasn't around for like six years so i was always looking for his love so mm. therefore chasing external validation and it's like you can't really win no. so does that make sense no you can't you can't. There's always something that's going to be missing or there's always something that's, you know, I'm not perfect as a parent. Mm. And this whole, the, the, the title of this podcast is so relevant to me when it comes to parenting because you really do learn as you go. Mm. Um, I mean, with Sunday, with Finty, you can, you can, I'm just, I just try my best. That's all I can do. And I believe that I'm I'm a big believer in the power of numbers. The more people you've got around, the more people's brains you can pick, the more help, the more support, the more people that you can gain advice from. Like, I honestly believe it takes a small village to raise a child. So I just wanted to take a little moment before we crack on with the rest of the episode to let you know about something that I am super passionate about. If you followed me over the last few years, you know I've been on an incredible journey. I've managed to turn my lifestyle completely around and I've learned so much along the way. I've acquired various different tools. I've learned from so many different amazing people. And I've now managed to create my own wellness brand. I can't even believe it myself. Um, It's called Food for Thoughts. And we are now focusing on four key pillars, nutrition, fitness, mindset, and connection. These are the four pillars that have got me to this point right now. We have just launched our brand new model in January and it's gone off to a flyer. We've just signed loads of new members. And it's so beautiful to see everybody thriving at the start of this year trying something new, coming out of the comfort zone. And we've got a team of dedicated coaches and an amazing community that are going to help everybody get to where they need to get to. So if you're looking for a lifestyle change this year and you want to be surrounded by like-minded people on the same wave as you, and you want to have access to regular Zooms with specialist nutri coaches, Zooms with myself, guest speakers such as Ollie Ollerton, if you want to have regular fitness classes online and be part of amazing events on a monthly basis, then Food for Thoughts is for you. It's also for you if you feel like you're stuck in a rut, you're going around in circles, you feel unsupported and you want to make some changes, but you don't know where to turn. This is the perfect one-stop shop to get you started and moving in the right direction. And remember, if you want to make some positive changes in 2024, head over to www.f4t.com and take the first step in working towards your very own lifestyle change. Thank you for your patience and enjoy the rest of the episode. When I used to go to see my therapist the first time, it was like, I need to know about your childhood. I went, don't worry about my childhood. I had a good childhood. Went, you don't understand, yeah. right? And everything, and now it all, you, go, you go back and you unpick it all. It all makes sense. However, you can't blame your parent no, for no. that. And I think you're so right in terms of like, but it must be difficult for you as a mum, knowing all these different triggers and things that might lead to this and everything else. But at the same time is, you can't really let that dictate your life because no. as long as you're doing your best and you are loving them in the best way possible, I mean, I suppose it helps like on a day-to-day basis, but yeah, it must be tricky that because it... I just think with um, with therapy and when thinking about my children, you know, you you sort of... Ther- I, I went to therapy for, for, for various reasons and I just felt like I needed that extra support. It was about six years ago now, but the biggest thing for me with therapy that I have broken through and I still go now once a week. I still commit to it. Once a week, yeah. Yeah, amazing. still once a week. And it's just, it's like going to the gym for me it's now. It's amazing. Like it is, it's honestly been so powerful. And this is why we we developed our mental health app, Shira, because we know that it's not accessible to everyone. And actually therapy can be really expensive. Yeah. But for me, that was, I felt like it was something that I really needed to do and go on that journey. But I have... I have been on such a journey and it's it's breaking those limiting beliefs that mm-hmm. you it's those stories that you think about yourself maybe that has come from from childhood so I think if anything that I can take from therapy to 
to sort of practice on with my children is that if they, if they think that themselves, if they think a certain way about themselves, you know, maybe Sunday's feeling not very confident or maybe she's sort of wrote this story about herself like I did, that I'm that I'm mad and that I'm the class clown and that I've got to perform. And, you know, like how you were saying about Scotty Special, mm. is that everyone sees you as this character and you start living up to that character and it, you get so far away from actually who you truly are. So I think from therapy, I'm going to, what I can instill on my children is actually bring them back to, but, but, but you, you can be whoever you want. You can go for your goals. You don't like, don't think that you're super shy. Like you can strive for absolutely anything, like and not to create those limiting beliefs about yourself. I think it's such a good point. I think therapy, um, the biggest thing it does, it brings self-awareness. Mm. Um, and it's so funny you say that. I went to my first therapy session and it sounds so stupid now. I was like, but I can't change People expect the Scotty special. When I go out, I'm the one. I've got to get them all going. Yeah. They expect me. You don't understand. I genuinely felt like I couldn't do it. It's and tiring. I, yeah, and then now sometimes I go in and go, I can't live up to Sober Scott. I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't <laughs> live up to Food for Thought Scott, this wellness Scott. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, sometimes it's pressure. So funny. Uh, honestly, because I obviously went sober in 2020 for a year and created this wellness brand, Food for Thoughts, and created this new life. And then I went... Right, I'm going to go back. I didn't want to be the boring sober guy. So yeah. I said, right, I'm going to go drink again, but I'm just going to be in, in moderation. And then I'd find myself feeling like every, every now and then at a kitchen party, like off my head. And I'm like, how has this happened? I've got a wellness brand and I'm meant to be this guy. And I was like, whoa, 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 this can't happen. And it's not the only reason why I stopped drinking again. Um, but it was one of the reasons because it was so confusing. Mm. Um, and, and listen, I'm not all about living in like one like dimension and just like you have to um, just be one type of person. I am about balance, but I couldn't find balance when it came to alcohol. I just couldn't like, um, I, in fact, I could go out for two drinks, but get nothing out of it. And the next day I wake up going, right, I need a big one. Like that's just wow. how I was like. Mm. And I couldn't, I wouldn't drink for two months, three months, but if I did, it could end in absolute carnage. So that's when I kind of like drew, drew the line with my relationship to alcohol. Yeah. Um, but no, but I, th I think, like you said, it's, it's finding balance and through therapy, it's finding that self-awareness. And you're saying with alcohol, it's like you, you couldn't find that balance. I was exactly the same, not with alcohol mm. because... I don't know if you can have a healthy relationship with it, but I can sort of have one and, yeah. and that's fine. Have one with dinner. If you can do that, then that's fine. But for me, I had this, and what I learned about in therapies is that I had this split and it was almost like, imagine like a pen, pendulum mm. where you'd swing from like one extreme to the next. And I was very impulsive and I was very like in the moment, but like, yeah, let's do that. And I would get very excited and it could be anything from like men in my life to going out to like really making like poor choices. Not Like, like I said, not around alcohol. Mm. I mean, I don't think alcohol is my friend, but, and I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. And actually not having that beat to be like, right, to, to be, balance to be level to stop that pendulum sort of swinging from one extreme to the other I had to learn how to do that especially when it comes to relationships and for me that was the biggest growth because actually even now like I'm even saying it to you on this podcast like yeah I am calm it feels really strange because I've never sort of put that with my personality but actually now I, I feel really, really balanced. I feel really calm. I feel like my feet are firmly grounded and I can make smart decisions. I'm not always going to get it fucking right. Like I mm. am going to drop the ball, but now I can be like, yeah, actually take a moment, take a breath. You know yourself. I trust myself now. Mm. I've never trusted myself. And I don't do that massive swing of like, even when it comes to, I mean, I'm with Laurie now, but relationships and friendships or reactions. I was, I was always like reacted in the moment. Now I reflect. Ooh, I don't react. I like that. Do you know mm. what? I think some of my team, probably Katie, can probably relate to the fact that I'm a little bit like that. Like, let's do this now. Like with the team and like yeah. everything needs to be done like tomorrow and this and that. And, it's like knee jerk. But I know I'm like that. That's why I need my teams. To, um, it's, it's weird. I always say to my team, like... I need you guys to rein me in. Mm. Like, especially Beth at the social PR. Like, I come in and I've got all these crazy ideas. And I'm not one of them where I go, right, this has, like, this is what's going to happen. But it's almost like, that's how I kind of operate in life. It's like, everything has to be done now. And I'm just in the, in the moment. And I think taking that, that breath, mm. and obviously we talked about a bit of breath work before we did this yeah. before. 
Um, yeah, it's just it's slowing down. And I posted today, this morning, a little come with me for a day in town. And I met up with Nathan Massey and we went for lunch and then I went through a bit of shopping and someone commented going, in it, Mad Scott, you would have looked at it as a proper boring day back in the day. <laughs> I was like, wow, yeah. I would have. But now that was actually quite an eventful day. And I talked to you before about this, like, we're, we're probably used to, especially in the partying days, extreme highs and lows. Mm. Whereas now I'm getting really comfortable just like living here, like yeah. in the middle. Yeah. And, and and it can be perceived as boring. Yeah. But it's so much more sustainable and it brings long-term happiness rather than yeah. short, short doses of it, if that makes sense. I've got a question for you. Go on. Do you ever get that urge to be like, be pulled back into doing something fun or what you thought back in the day was fun. Cause sometimes, yes, I'm, I'm living, living and leading my life. And then I'm like, I, I get that like pull back. Like I want to do something wild. And then I have to have a check in with myself, but I'd still get that. Like, what, what can I do? My life is really boring. Like, I, how can I not fuck it up? But how can I self sabotage? Yeah, that's There's no drama in my life. hundred percent. All the other two said to me that whenever, whenever something's going really well, he will pull out like this uh, metaphorical grenade and just basically mess it all up for himself. And mm. it was like a self-sabotage behavior. And I've got that now. It's like when something's going really well, I am looking for something that's going to like self-destruct me. Do you know what I mean? And it's not alcohol anymore because I can go to a bar now and I sit in a bar and I can be surrounded by all this alcohol and I don't have any temptation to drink the alcohol. Wow. What I am craving though is the feeling that it gave me. Yeah. Right? Escapism, the chance to switch off the chance to do something that's going to make me feel alive. And I get the closest thing to it is cold water. I've seen that you go and do the sea, yes. sea swims, which I think is amazing. But even just the other day, I put out on my Instagram, uh, I think I'm going to do a skydive this year. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I've never done one before. Searching for the next high. Yeah, but I think I, I do want to chase those. I do not chase those highs, but I do want to find something that makes you feel that alive. Mm. But at the same time is alcohol and, and whatever else, it's not, it's not a natural high. It's not real. It's artificial. No. Yeah. Does that make sense? Do you know what I love to do? Go on. Talk to me about the sea swimming, by the way. Because I think that when you went and did that, like, I think that, I mean, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> like, right. Can I, can I just, it's, I, I love the fact that you think I'm a sea swimmer. Like I absolutely, I've done it once. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the, the, what you see on Instagram is like, wow. No, I done it once. My, my PA actually lives um, in near South End, and I was like, right, first of Jan. <laughs> I was I was in bed on New Year's Eve at half past eight. It was so lovely. We went out for an early dinner, and then we planned to do the sea swim, and it was amazing. <laughs> and I said I was going to do it again. Laurie is actually building an ice bath. I mean, it's taken him ages, but um, I am very much into health and wellness, like very much into it. Um, I lead, yeah, a, a, a healthy life. Like I'm, I'm really health conscious about the food that I eat, about you know limiting alcohol, sleep. I'm not getting any sleep at the moment. It's just out the window, so I've just had to park that. But um, yeah, interested in all of the biohacking stuff. Mm, that's interesting. We just, we had Russell Kane on the podcast, and he's massive on that. Oh, he loves it. Yeah, he looks so young. He's forty eight, yeah, and he looks that's incredible. Mental. Um, and I think Russell's really interesting because he's so obsessed with like being healthy and staying young, but he will still go to Ibiza and have a big session, like whatever else, because he just believe wow. he just think, and he only do it every now and then. But he just believed that human beings should still be able to enjoy life, and and, and I yeah. and listen. I'm all about that. The only problem with me, I have no problem with people who drink go out and have big nights out as long as it makes them happy and they can find that balance that's cool but for me it was kind of all or nothing um but talk to me about wellness right because it's so easy for me as um a single 35 year old guy with my own life to balance all these things waking up meditating reading everything else how on earth do you look after yourself when you are a busy mum and you've got so many plates spinning and oh yeah, it's hard. Like I said, I'd love to be doing more meditation. I'd love to just go off on a lovely retreat. I'd like to do those evening sound baths, but I can't because mm. my children take priority. But those times will come. I just mm. know that this is a chapter in my life. I'm exclusively breastfeeding my my baby and, you know, this time is for them. So I've had to park certain things, but then you can sort of cherry pick and tailor your perfect wellness 
plan, so to speak. And this is what I love about the app that we created, Shira, with Laurie, is that we we collated everything that worked for us, that helped us heal, survive, thrive in those moments of really, you know, dark times, put it all into one app. Um, and then it's it's seamless. It's not overwhelming because I think that spirituality, wellness, whatever you you you're into, it can be a really overwhelming space. Mm. And it's like, where do I even start? Mm. So for me, I just like to keep it simple and set myself realistic goals that I can actually achieve. So it's like, well, I can definitely eat well. I can definitely fuel my body with goodness. I can definitely cut back on the alcohol. I can do breath work. We've done it before this mm. podcast in five minutes. So it's about doing sort of flexing it into your life that works at this at that moment in time. Oh, that makes so much sense. Um, and obviously, talk to me a little bit about Shira then. Is that how you say it, Shira? Shira, Shira yeah. Shira, I like Shira it. or Shura? Shira. Shira. It just gives you that hurrah feeling. I like you know? it. So talk to me about the, like, the vision for that. And is it a lot more, more in the corporate space? Is that right? So we've just launched Shira Business, okay. which is a completely different world to me. I've right. really had to learn a lot of mm. new skills, Scott. Oh mm. my goodness. All these different CRM this, Slack that. Oh. Oh my good. It's like literally. Structure. I hate oh, structure. It's structure. And Laurie's like, sometimes, because because we're business partners and we're romantic partners and we're parenting together. It is hard. Yeah. Um, but we're yin and yang. He's very good at sort of driving the business forward. And he he's I I, I don't even know the word corporate. Mm. I don't know. He implements all the structure. Sounds amazing. I'm more, you know, is the, he operational. The, He's operational, thank you. Whereas I'm more the creative and and the t I'm the team builder. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's great. We've just launched our B2B line to take it into businesses, which has been amazing. We've got um, an AI solution where employers are going to be able to actually help their team instead of just getting a survey and sort of just doing something to tick the box with mm. wellness. So that's exciting. And then we're just complete, we're just continuously developing it. Now we've got an AI therapy companion where you can actually speak wow. to, yeah, speak to Sharu, Shiraz guru at any time no about way. anything. We've got different pods, uh, five to 12 minutes. We don't want to take up too much of people's time. We don't want to consume more time from, mm. you know, everyone's time poor. Everyone seems to be living in the fast lane and got a million things going on. So it's doing something little every day is better than doing nothing at all. Ooh. So it's cool. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, if I had it my way, I, I this year I made um, not a new, I had a vision, I won't go into it, mm. but I had a vision through meditation that, I actually wanted to connect more with my spirit guides. Wow. You know, and really sort of liaise with them, be guided because yes, we can manifest. Yes, we can create our own destiny. But actually a lot of things happen that really floor you. You know, I've had so many moments where the rug has been pulled from right beneath my feet just when I think I've got it all together. So at the moment I'm sort of really being guided. That's not in the app, by the way. But mm. like I said, if I had it my way, I'd just put it all in. Mm. Um so yeah, that's been quite exciting actually, really tuning into your intuition. Mm. The purpose of the app is to ultimately help people thrive. It's more of a preventative tool yeah, like instead it. of a crisis. Oh, something you just said then about intuition. My intuition has been telling me stuff recently, but I just didn't want to listen to it, if that makes sense. And no matter how much I fought against it, it's kind of ended up the way that my intuition wanted it to end. So true, because here's the deal. That is, this is what I believe. Mm. That is the universe, your spirit guides, the law, the, 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 the God, the higher power, whatever you want to call it. Mm. That is the universe saying, Scott, listen, 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 mm. until, and you, and all the signs and all the writings on the wall, the signs are there. And then when you don't, they'll go boom and make something happen where you have to stop or you have to listen. And then mm. um, unfortunately that ends up being really shit. And mm. then it, whereas if you, t if you stepped up and, and thought, I'm going to trust my gut something and I'm going to, it might be uncomfortable. You might have to have an awkward conversation, but you, you sort of go with your gut, then it will all come out 
come out think, much more of a positive outcome. That's what I believe. I think it's a lot easier to do when you've got self-confidence, mm. when you're actually in a really good place and everything else is really strong around you. I think it's a lot easier to listen to that. And I think, listen, this year when I went sober again for the first time, wow, this year has been relentless, but I just cleared everything out. Like any problem that's come my way, I've just like tackled it head on. One thing that you seem to be kind of... Um, living proof of is self-confidence, like knowing who you are. And I think I know who I am now as well. I know what I want, I know what I want, but it's kind of so easy to be distracted and pulled in different mm. directions. But like you said, it's, I think it's just taking that moment, that breathing space just to go, like, what do I actually want? And yeah. what's right for me? But I think it's in those moments where you might feel a little bit lost or confused or you haven't got direction. It's in their moments where you can really sit in meditation. And again, just sort of pose the question, what, well, what do I want? And then you'll get guidance and then you might, and, and until you sort of start having those conversations, well, what actually does, what do I want? Where should I be heading? Then you'll get little signs and you can really, yeah, tune into your intuition. Mm. But I mean, I'm talking all of this like I'm a freaking guru. Mm. There are so many times where I, I don't listen to that and then I get I spiral and then I sort of tune into my unhealthy coping mechanisms. And, and that's normal. I think, yeah, do you know what? it is that, normal. That's, that's good to know. And I think a lot of people need to know that like, no one's perfect. You no. might, you, you know these tools, they're always there to go back to. But what, so I speak to my team sometimes about this and a lot of them are like, in their early 20s, they're just not even ready to listen. Your team are so glam. Yeah, the social power girls, they are really cool and glam and everything else. And they're just, I think when you're in your early 20s, you're not really kind of ready to go fully into wellness. Some people are, but like you have to be a little bit open-minded. Like even when you're talking about a meditation, spirituality, I know there's a lot of people going, oh, honestly. Oh, no, I know. So what was the moment that opened your mind to that? Was there someone you came into your life? Like who opened your mind to that? Yeah, I had this one conversation, I'll never forget it. I was a hairdresser in working in Covent Garden just before TOWIE and I really wanted, my friends were on TOWIE and I. that's what, you know, you've got to remember, that's all I ever wanted. I wanted to be famous and I want, it looked so fun what they, and I'd sort of go along with them and film be I'd be like an extra and I just loved it I loved being around it but um Can't and then imagine I'd... you being an extra fern it don't make sense <laughs> you're so like well you gotta do it and then event I eventually joined Towie in series nine wow, that's people men... thought I was an OG but yeah that's mental yeah that. mad um and then I I'd go on the London commute and then I, I think I quite naturally daydreamed and would just take my mind elsewhere to almost manifesting unconsciously um and then I had this client who was really ethereal she was really really spiritual and really cool um and quite woo woo you know and she could just sense you know you get that energy this is what I love about energy you could just feel from someone good bad positive what have you and she was like just so random said I'd never met her she was a new client she said have you ever asked what your purpose is in life and I was like, it really just stopped me in my tracks, stopped me when I was highlighting her hair. And um, I was like, J just what is my purpose? Like, what is my purpose? Why have I been put on this earth? What can I bring to the world? And it's a big question and it, it's really scary because then you think, then you sort of spiral and you think, well, I, I don't really know. And then, and that was the beginning when, and she pointed me down to this incredible shop in Covent Garden that had lots of crystals and spirituality and self-help books and all of this. And I, she, she, yeah, she sent me there and she said, just get drawn to whatever. And then she said, and then tomorrow, take your shoes off. I mean, this is going a bit woo-woo, but I am very much into grounding. Take your shoes off and just look up and go, what is my purpose? And I know that that sort of <laughs> that sort of vision, you just take your shoes off, stick your feet in some soil, and just say, what is my purpose? But um, yeah, it's a big question. I think it's a question that those that you know, the 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 girls in your team, whether it's okay, it won't it might not lead them on a spiritual journey, but it might help them set some goals and strive. Mm. Just to be like, what 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 skill set have I got? Mm. Instead of focusing on you know, I'm not like this person. I'm not like that person. We've all got different strengths and weaknesses. What are my strengths? What's my purpose? Mm. What can I bring to the table? Because I believe that you are your USP. Mm. You is what is is going to to 
make a difference in the world. It's you. Mm. And we shouldn't deviate from that. Mm. So in your 20s, you're sort of exploring, yeah, going back to that, who am I, who, you know, being your authentic self. And it definitely takes time and a lot of practice. But even just starting with that question and that moment, I'll just never forget it. It just stayed with me. And I thought, oh, and then when I started asking the questions, I thought, I don't want to do this. I don't want to... I don't know offense to hairdressers, but you've got to really love it. You mm. have. You, um, and I, I just didn't. And I wanted an out. And I think it was from that moment that I really started exploring it. And I featured it so much on my reality show, you know, hugging trees. I want people to be like, oh, okay, that's different. Mm. Maybe yeah. I should go and hug a tree. Yeah, I love that. So do you think, what is your purpose then? It's a really good question. I really... Oh, God, you've asked me now. You've put me on the spot. I think my purpose is to, I always thought it was to perform and to make people laugh and to be, you know, this larger than life character. But actually. Energy. I was going to say energy, like the energy you bring. I'm quite similar in, in a way. Yeah. Like bring your energy I, to people. I, I, yeah, I, I love, I love being around people. Mm. Like people, I'm inquisitive by nature. I love genuinely learning about people's lives and where they've come from and what makes people tick or thrive and I'm a team player I'm a team player in parenting I'm a team player in in the production of my show like I love being in a team and I think that like I said with Shara with our app is that I like that sort of camaraderie I like getting people together and bringing people together and bringing the best out in people and maybe that's my purpose I like people to feel yeah, warm and just that's, good about themselves. That's crazy. That is exactly what I think my purpose is. <gasps> Whether it was like throwing parties or organizing yeah. walks in the countryside, I'm good at bringing people together. Love that. And, and, and making them feel good. Community. Uh, yeah, and I think like just honestly, Fern, like the way that you walked in that room before and just brought the energy to everybody, you looked everybody in the eye, you made them all feel good. Like that is a skill and a gift that not many people have. Oh, babe. And I think like the more that you lean into that, yeah. the more that you'll, you'll even just you'll just keep developing what your purpose is and, and, f and figuring out what kind of avenues that involves. Yeah. I just want one last question to end this on. Yeah. Like, I feel like all your life, I might be wrong, and just by little things when you talk about relationships, like you've always wanted to be in love and oh. be in a relationship and be happy. And it, mm. from what I see, it seems like you finally found that. How did you know that Laurie was the one? Oh, I think I knew just from the moment that he walked in that I was like, yes, this is the man that I've been waiting for. But I think throughout my whole life, I've always thrown my heart. And like I said, been really impulsive um, with relationships. But Laurie is, he's quite similar to, we're very different. He's very different in the sense that he's very driven. He, I mean, I am as well, but he's sort of very structured, very organized. He's brilliant in so many ways and I'm sort of more laid back, but we complement each other. Um, we're both interesting characters. I'm not going to say mm. that it's all fireworks, romance, brilliant all the time. Mm. Like we go up against each other quite a lot, mm. but I like that. He challenges me. Mm. He keeps me on my toes. And honestly, like I just... I, I learned so much from him. Like mm. he's very wise and he, I mean, he's got an amazing story from where he started to where mm. he is now. And I just, I really appreciated the growth. We bonded, I mean, it's, yeah, we bonded over our traumas, Scott. Mm. We, li we literally amazing. did. We was like, we was really transparent. And he was the first guy that I laid all my cards on my table, on the table. And I was like, this is me, warts and all. Yeah, I showed up as my tr true authentic self. There's so many dates. I mean, I used to go on dates with, so I'm going down a rabbit hole, but like mm. footballers, this, that, mm. like people in the public eye, people not, like businessmen. I mean, I'm really making myself out to be like no, a serial no, dater, but yeah. I did date yeah, a lot. Yeah. And I'd always sort of tailor myself to be what I thought they would like mm. so I could bag a second date. Mm. And actually... It, it never works, does it? Until mm. you're just completely yourself, that's when people can get to know the true mm. you. I love that. So, yeah, I want to know about your love oh. life. Well, just for coming to the end of the podcast as well. Oh, no, it's funny because one of my favorite <laughs> films is Meet Joe Black. Oh, and, it's so good. And someone asked the guy in it, he says, like, how do you know when you mean love? It's when he says, basically, when you are unapologetically yourself and they know everything about you and it's still okay. That has given me shivers. Yeah. That is such a brilliant film. It's the best film ever. And it's so true. Yeah. It's so true because like we said, being you, being being vulnerable with someone can be really mm. can be really scary. Mm. I remember my my ex before, hang on. 
two exes before Laurie. Mm. I remember going on a date with him. We was quite into the relationship and I thought, I can't say. It was something to do with, I mean, I, I, yeah, I can't actually talk about it. But <laughs> I thought, I, I, thought I, I can't share this with him because he'd just be like, you are just like baggage. You, you're just, you're just that, like you come with so much. And I thought, I can't, I'm, he's just not going to love me. Mm. And I held it for, like I kept it back. And it's there's just no point. Yeah, you want someone who's ride or die, regardless. Yes. And I think one thing I've noticed recently is like you can love someone like so much, but if it doesn't um practically work as well, logistically and everything else, like it sounds daft, like especially when you get a bit older, like it needs to work as well. Does that yeah. make sense? You need yeah. to complement each other, like yes. you said. And it doesn't matter if you just love someone and you care about them. All the other stuff needs to come into consideration totally. as well. Totally. I, I used to lust so hard. And with Laurie, yes. one thing that I know is that we have not got the perfect relationship at all, mm. far from it, but we've got solid foundations. And one thing that I know about that man is he would take a bullet for me. <laughs> he would, yeah. <laughs> yes, you would, Laurie. <laughs> what you say? Yes, you would, darling. She wasn't even saying it like, he was, she was like, he better take that bullet. <laughs> no, do you know what? It, I, I would go... I would go in the trenches with that man. Like I'd, I'd yeah. want him by my side. He is, he is solid, and he is. Even though we can sort of, you know, have these big moments of, because we're big characters and we sort of like hash it out in not a row, but you know, mm. big conversations. Then there's other times that I think, you know, he will absolutely be by my side and big me up. And I, I love that. You know, I love the compliment. That's that's what I mean. <laughs> I need someone who's going to big me up. Yes, like, we do. I feel yeah. like we're very similar. Yeah. I need someone who's going to make me, like, do you know what I mean? Because it's weird because I'm so confident. I think you are as well. But I, always, I also have that little self-doubt sometimes. It's oh, weird. Oh, cause What star sign are you? Leo. <laughs> I knew it. No, because you know what, right? We like to be, because we're like big lines, we like to be stroked like cats. Yeah. And we like our egos to be yeah. stroked as well. And it makes us feel good. Do you know what? That it's... is my love language. Words of affirmation. Yeah. Like when it's like, you've done a great job. You are such a good podcaster. <laughs> don't I finish, Isn't he the don't, best interviewer? Don't I finish sometimes and go, guys, was it any good? good? Was it any yeah. good? Was that, <laughs> like, oh no, I could have done that the, with the same. Yeah, no, they always the finish like saying to the guests, they go, like, yeah, guys, was I any good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about me? And they, what well, about they, me? They, I know that they just think, oh, he's naturally confident. He didn't need to be told. Do you know what I mean? No, like, but we need to be yeah, told. Yeah, 100%. We need to be told. Well, I'm going to tell you again, you've been amazing. This has been one of my favorite episodes. Uh -huh. And Fern, honestly, thank you so much for being here. I tell you what, I knew that me and Fern were connected in some way. Like the fact that we're both Leos makes so much sense because everything she was saying I could relate to. And she's just electric. She walks in the room and she brings that energy to everybody around her. And I think Fern's had it tough over the last few years, but she's a beautiful soul. She really is. And you can tell she's on a journey spiritually, emotionally, just she's constantly working on herself and it's inspiring to see. And, and, I can tell that she just wants the best for people around her as well. So I hope you've got so much out of today's episode because I know I have. And I've got a newfound love and respect for Fern as a person. And I'm really grateful for her taking time out of a busy schedule to be here. And yeah, if you're not into wellness yet, I think you should be by now. Um, thank you guys for listening in and tuning in. And thank you for always supporting the podcast. I see all your interactions on Instagram. Keep them coming. Tag me, scott.thomas. Also follow learning as I go pod underscore on Instagram. And I will be back next week with another incredible guest on learning as I go. Lots of love. See you next week. <laughs>